Welcome to another day in the Ideal Auto Factory. Thank you guys for tuning in for this video. Today, we are going to be installing the RGB Halo kits, Halo and VRL running lights, as well as grill lights on this wide-body 392 Charger. We're also going to be tinting the tail lights. As you can see, these are pretty stock, and it's one of the first things you should do when you get your 392, among you know other things like getting an awesome exhaust, taking cats out of it, things like that. So um, let's jump into the video. First thing you're going to do is put your car on ramps or get the car higher off the ground, at least the front bumper. So right now, let's get in the car. Let's go ahead and back it into the driveway. This car has 4,000 miles on it. Oh, 8,000 miles. Must have been 4,000 on the trip so far. The 392, definitely different from the other one. From the 345, the way the transmission engages, it's almost like a, it's not a dual clutch transmission, but it is definitely a little different. All right, let's use this camera. We got trust issues with reverse camera, I can tell you this. We go back it in. Another thing I can tell you about this car Said, I know it's got 8,000 miles on it. I'm very humbled to be working on it. I'm gonna grab my ramps, put them where they're supposed to be. Plug out the way. I really hope this works because they don't work in my garage. They just might have enough grip on this pavement to work. We gonna see. Y'all let me know if I make it. Oop, that's one side. Oh, nice, perfect. Let's shut them off. Step two is actually has nothing to do with the car. We just got the car up on jacks, up on the ramps, up in the air, like we said. But step two has everything to do with what you have and making sure that you're not about to waste your time taking this whole car apart when a company shipped you the wrong products. Cause this happened before. So always check to make sure you got everything and to make sure everything works before you take a car apart. We indeed have two sets of strips for one for each headlight. That's one halo, second halo, got that power. Got splitters, more splitters, got extensions, and the grill lights. Everything is here. And some other stuff too. No stickers though. This video is the instructions. You do not need the paper. Just watch this video. Now that we made sure the inventory is all there, now we got to make sure the inventory actually works and then we can get started on the car. So step 2.1. So how about grab yourself a battery and all of the supplies that you just inventory, strips, halos, everything like that. 
and we're going to plug it all up and test it. Okay, so this is where everything that has this three, three wires, see the three holes, three wires, everything gets plugged up. Don't, don't even think about it. Like, just, just get your stuff. So like this here, this is the power supply. That's a power supply here. That plugs into the battery, red and black to red and black. And what does that say? What does that say right there? That tells you the app you're gonna use and what exactly it is. This says for output. So these all look the same and they correspond to some of these. So we're gonna plug them in, one. And there's a second one here, two. That is the wires right here. So now we're gonna keep adding stuff to them so we can't anymore. Oh look, there's four more connections there. We only got two more. So that means you can plug one in. And now we need a splitter, which is right here. Flow four output. Same thing. Plug this side into this. And now we got four more outputs. So we got three left for the actual DRLs. And this is just for the test. When we plug them all in later, I'll show you exactly how we do it to kind of make it a cleaner install. So now that all four of the DRLs are in, we got two more halos to plug in. Don't be like me and waste money or try to make sure everything's good by ordering an extra splitter. They give you everything you need at RGB Halo Kit, so they kind of know what you're trying to do so you don't have to um, predict and then get extra stuff. They give you the stuff already. Got one more left. But I got two halos. So I need to add another splitter. I'm gonna add that other splitter. And then we're gonna add in two halos. One. Two. So let's count how many times we plugged into things. We've got four outputs here, four outputs here, which equals eight, and then the actual controller, the part that's connected here, has four as well. So we need 16 outputs in order to get 10 things to plug in. Now, now that we got everything plugged in, we're gonna run some power I'm gonna cut this zip tie with my pliers. There we go. Check our fuse. Little 10 amp fuse. And then it even says connect this wire first. So connect the ground first. And then plug our power up. And when we plug our power up, some stuff just start illuminating. And there we have it. They're all working. This fuse is running through modes right now. Both halos work too. So now that we got everything working, we know everything works. We know that what we bought is actually working and can be installed into the vehicle. Now we're going to actually take apart the vehicle to install these parts.
the bumper is off and I have the headlights on the ground. Now, I highly recommend you watch a video or get instructions on how to take this bumper off. I've worked on enough now that I don't watch videos anymore. I just kind of look where I know things are and get it done. It is a process, which is why you want to make sure everything works prior to taking this bumper off and taking the headlights off. Now that I have the headlights off, we have to remove these brackets down here because the headlight is also part of the bumper bracket. So we take these two screws out and then we can pop this whole headlight into the oven and get it ready to release the seal on these lenses and put in the actual headlight DRL and halos. Now, one thing to note, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna have the oven preheating and then afterwards, once this is in the oven, I'm gonna actually get my wiring started. So I'm kind of doing two things at one time. I'm never really sitting and waiting. You can do it however you like. Let's go grab a headlight. These headlights are pretty light, so I got a feeling they're either halogen or LED. They're definitely not HID. I have it off. There goes the two screws. One right here and one right there. One headlight ready to go in the oven. Got my gloves handy. So far, I believe the supplies you're needing is a pry tool, like a clip removal tool. You're needing a flathead screwdriver, a 10 millimeter uh, socket extension, a ratchet, an eight millimeter socket extension, seven millimeter as well for under the car. I don't think I've missed any supplies yet. Uh, let me go grab the other headlight. Be right back. My buddy RG, if he was watching, he'd be proud of me because I always talk about using power tools. And he's always like, man, you need to get your knuckles. You need to get your hands dirty, man. So he's not really into power tools. Used to work on a lot of stuff together. Both headlights are ready, ready for that oven. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this set up on the car. We're gonna start wiring up some stuff. This area is where we're mostly going to be. Let's map out how things should go. So I'm filtering out, getting my power supply again. So as we all know, power supply is the silver box and we have the positive and negative here. Always, I put the ground down there. One of two places, either right here or the next one. One of those and the positive goes here. You unplug that, I mean unscrew that and put it under it or I find a key on source in the fuse box and use a fuse tap. Right now, what I'm gonna do is hook it up just plug and play mode. So what I'll do is I'll take that off and put the piece under there. Be right back, put you on the time lapse. Now this next part, really, really transparent with you guys, but I feel like you all deserve an honest video. So what I do here is I place things where they're not hard to get to, but you actually have to have some know-how or, you know, actual no fear kind of attitude to get to these things. Right now, I can just throw this all under there and be all right. But that's not what we do here. I make everything really clean. 
by sticking the power supply under here, nice and tight. And then next is the actual box. And then the Bluetooth controller gets hidden under there as well. So most times when you're looking up here, the only thing that gives away once the bumper is on that you actually have some modifications. Obviously your light's turning on, but also you see a red wire coming up here to this area and that's all you have. So what I'm gonna do now is put you on another time lapse and I'm gonna mount everything where they should go. I'm over here now about to drill the holes for the bottom half of the grill lights. I have these little um, underglow, but I have these from there. So I'm using four total. One, two, three, four. And you got to drill a hole and then get some screws to mount these. So I'm doing that now. Other than that, I did cut that, I cut the LED strip. That's the drill bit. Can I finish though? Yes I can. Heck yeah. I need a bigger drill bit. So under here, got our piece here. We should go up like that. Take our screw. Simple screw, nothing big. Regular screw like that. And then we drive it in. You know you drilled the right hole. Because it, get, it does resist a little bit. And you can't pull it out. So that right there is nice. Nice way to do it there. Now what I do is I measure, I kind of not really measure, but I make sure that I got the right length here. So I know it's about this long. Sun is coming up now. I measure how long I need it to be. Move it over just a little bit, get the full picture here. I measure how long it needs to be. Hello. And now that I got my measurement here, this is where I cut, right there. Is that for that green pliers right there? Green and black. Thank you, JJ, come here. Thank you. No, I just don't want you walking through there right now. 
So now you cut right on the line there. You can see all of those lines, copper line, 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 line. Those represent where you can cut. My son said, yeah. I'm going to take the cap, put it over here with all the, with the sticky, get yourself the cap, good to go, all upside down by the way, so thank you for being down here, oh, oh of course, and then I forgot, so they fit in the slot, right? Mm lot here as you can see that's why you don't want them to be like perfectly straight uh, and then I'm gonna route that wire that way. Our gravity is fighting a gravity is fighting against me on this one. So I will end up doing a zip ties air with like three of these, I believe. That is much better. And you notice it's on the back half of the support, bumper support. That's because the front half, like the, the bumper like grabs into. So you don't want it up front because then it'll get covered or just push back. Let's go ahead and cut these. Now we're going to go inside and get the other headlight. I've already done one. I did that with the camera off. I usually do one with the camera off. And now we're going to do this one together. I'm going to go grab it out of the oven that you saw me, uh, you know, show you it in. I'm going to wear my gloves and I'm going to come outside. So you're going to be waiting for me on the table. And then, you know, just wait for me. I'll be there. It is hot. I know I'm sounding pretty chill, but they are hot. So first thing I do is I release all these tabs. That's one. Most of them you can do by hand. That's two. Three there. Four. Five and six, and one more, seven. And then I start over here. Put you guys over here. Start over here with the prying of things. So you can't just be like, oh yeah, let's, uh, let's just pry it open. You know, you can't just do that. See how that doesn't work? So you gotta take your time, cause it's a seal. And my left hand is getting hot. Cause of how hot this is. You see that? That's not working, so a lot of times you can manually break the seal without burning your hands. I'm pretty sure there are better heat resistant gloves but none of them have uh, the dexterity that this offers at the same time. Not to me, at least. So I'm making my way around.
So now that I've broken that manually, that seal, I can go in here with this. In between both the headlight lens and the headlight itself, I kind of like take my time and move it. Because it ain't going to want to move at first. And you keep on going. Since the stuff is so soft, kind of make your way around pretty quickly. This side likes to move a little easier. Well, almost. Got the while to start making some noise. Getting somewhere. Ooh, it's hot. There we go. I know you see it moving now, right? There's a the noise I was talking about. We got that side. Now this side should want to walk up a little bit. I keep doing that backwards. Need to go this way. Yep, starting to move. There we go. There it is. Starting to walk. I just take my time here. I try not to pry too hard. And I also help my situation by breaking a lot of it free on the side. go go further there we go starting to walk and that's a very slow pull and it's starting to move again I'm watching it further up here and watching the seal kind of like lift so as that's doing that you can't forget about this side I come back. This side is not as cooperative. So you give it the business too. And help it out. fashion pool here. And this glue is called Permaseal. It doesn't melt or do anything I guess you could say like different when it heats up. The only thing it does is allow you to break the seal, but it does not like melt like regular glue, which is why it's not fun to, to try and take apart. There we go. Come further up. Mm-hmm. Help myself out right here. Usually around the clips, it's a little tighter. It's 
Let's go here again. Let's go right here. See what we got. Yeah, breaking that seal. All right, that should be enough to do the all important spreader reparter. And there is a little trick to kind of getting above the the hump here. Still got a little bit of work to do. Not much. Now, most I would recommend at this point, you put this back in the oven. I know what I have to do to get this out, so I'm not. But before you get to applying too much uh, effort on these headlights, I would put them back in the oven. I have so much loose, it's almost like, why is it coming out, you know? There we go. All right. We are out. Place this lens face down somewhere. So no dust gets in it. What's up? I'm back. I'm actually in my RC, <clears throat> excuse me, RC workspace because it's dark outside. I had a small group, had a wonderful time with some friends, and now I'm back to getting these lights done. So what I'm about to do now is disassemble the lights. Um, there's four screws in the whole thing before you can take this whole cover off. And then you disconnect the regular DRLs, disconnect them completely so they don't shine. And then you install the new DRLs. So put you on the time lapse again, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. A little windscreen fell off of this thing. <sighs> but <clears throat> I'm gonna screw everything back in right now. And then I'll give you guys a tour of what I did so you can do it yourself. Got my little Harbor Freight. This is this five volt? I don't even know. Four volt rechargeable electric screwdriver. Makes things pretty quick. And it being four volts means that I'm not gonna torque stuff down too much. A lot of little screws, 10 of them.
So, you have two DRL strips. Bottom one, the top one. You gotta remove this piece right here with the nine screws on the back. They're all chrome. One, two, three, and so forth and so on, right? You remove that piece and then there's a couple of clips and this whole middle piece will lift out and then you have to remove the diffusers. You have to remove these and then you take the tape off of the back of this, of both of these and you stick them in. They're held in place by that. See how it goes under those? So you can still move a little bit. But it's held in place by this. See that? It's not going anywhere. Perfectly shaped and held in place over here. And the wire is just in there. You see it ends one more, one more LED and then it ends one more diode, I guess. And then boom, wires come out of there. And then the halo, the halo is a special piece where it looks like it's floating, but it's really not. I drilled a hole and a hole over here. You see the hole right there. And there is a clear fishing line going through that. Same over there. Let's see right there. And that is 25 pound high strength fishing line. Tie a knot in the back and you're good. Tie a knot in the back. And you're good to go. So now this has to go onto the actual housing here and I have to unplug this. Now this is a wide body challenger, I mean charger. So if you look right here, there's no signal light. Apparently in these, the DRLs is the signal light. It's a switchback. And you can see by those orange LEDs in there or diodes in there, not the white or yellow ones, but the orange ones, amber. So when I disconnect that, it means that on this, in order for this to function correctly, you have to get a turn signal harness so that you don't lose the turn signal function. And I'll have to get that for this customer. So now I'm just going to bring over the headlight, make sure nothing's in it. Disconnect this here. Uh, that, that wire for that headlight there. Place that somewhere over here out of the way, out of the picture. So, see there's nothing connected over here anymore. There's no wires connecting to that. That stops the like white or orange light from just shining like off to the side of this thing. And it'll look really weird. So, and now, we need to find our exit path for these wires. I usually do it under, under the um, headlight. That way water doesn't get in or anything. But yeah, let me go ahead and do that. And I'll be back. You just drill a hole. I got my hole drilled right there. I'm going to put some wires through it. Are you going to see me do here? Got three sets of wires. One is outrageously long. Uh, but I'll try and flatten them out and make, get all them coils up. Mm, come on. So, go through. That's one, one is through, second one is through, and the third one is through. See that? 
another O3. Get the slack out of all of it. That black one is really long compared to the red and the black ones. And now that they're all through, I keep pulling it. supposed to be oh, there's a little doll there it's one two three and four and so now the whole headlight is kind of like back together I got to put the screws in but once I do that we're gonna go test the lights again. Good morning, it's the next day. All right, so what'd you miss? Well, all you missed was <laughs> not much at all. Uh, I did do t a test on the, on the actual headlights and everything to make sure they worked. So there's that. I'm gonna clean my camera now. And then also I pre-wired everything. So I'll show you guys that really quick and then go in there and get the headlights. They are sealed now. Um, honestly, taking them apart, you seal them with retro rubber or uh, butyl. So um, they're the same thing. Retro rubber and butyl are the same thing. And then uh, from there, you just make sure the clips actually clip back in and then you're good to go. Now, what I'm going to do yeah, let, let, let me show you guys what I, what I, what I did while you were away. All right, so here we have the wires for the, is that driver's side? Yeah, I thought I was in a JDM car for a second. But the Jody, J, yeah, driver's side. Uh, driver's, gosh, it's definitely the morning. Driver's side lights the two DRLs and then a halo and then if you come over here you'll notice the wires are hidden they're all hidden here nothing's like hanging off or anything you can't see the wires and they go to about here so these wires are Force through there. All right, let me go get these headlights. Headlight number one, resealed, ready to go. Just shove it right in there, right? All sealed up. Now, next thing we gotta do is put the wire under. Now that we've done that, I can clean this up and put the headlights back in.
Got to make sure all my zip ties are cut that I didn't cut yet. Just reconfirming. I think that's everything. Yep. We're going to go ahead and make sure really quick. No, I can't do that just yet. Can't do it just yet. One second. All I'm doing is putting butyl in here. Now there are tools that you can actually buy or I guess a specific like strain relief. I used to run those a lot. I don't have any more right now. One thing I learned though, I'm not gonna run it through the lid anymore. <laughs> I almost forgot on this side, on that side over there, there's two connections that aren't being used. There's two connections that aren't being used. You have one right here and then one right here. And what I do is I seal those off with heat shrink. And what this does is it stops water from getting in to those areas. I take this big pliers here and I clamp down on those spots. Once you heat shrink it up enough, and that should be enough on both sides. Watch it shrink up. Hmm. All right, got them nice and warm. Take our pliers. Seal it off. Let's clamp tight. All right, so now that we have everything connected, just remember that one splitter should go to one headlight and the other splitter should go to the other headlight. On your splitters, make sure that you're not putting a grill light, then a halo, then, a, then another halo over there. Keep your splitter dedicated to one component, one piece of the build. So a splitter goes to the driver headlight and then one splitter goes to the passenger headlight hope that makes sense if not let me know in the comments uh but yeah let's let's go ahead and install some headlights
Just pulled it out, man. And there we have it. That's the full video on how to install some LEDs into your Dodge Charger headlights. I actually was able to talk to y'all. I was able to show you stuff that I do in my garage. Not really on a daily basis, but it's gotten, it's, it's almost muscle memory now. Also, I enjoyed creating something that was kind of longer instead of just quick and, quick and done. It gives, you know, show some dedication to actually what I'm doing because sometimes I get to a place where I'm like, I gotta create a short video for you guys, but no, that one, I wanted to give you a lot of details, a lot of the, the struggle, you could say. And the outcome was great. That car is actually back in my garage right now to get a full wrap in Evolve Motor APA Halo Lavender. The full wrap will be done on, I'd say Sunday or Monday. Um, so look forward to that, giving you a full 360 of that. But thanks for watching. I really appreciate it if you made it this far into the video. And y'all keep God first. I'll catch you on the next one.